Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss and I have a head-to-head -head color pencil battle to do with you today. We're gonna put Castle Arts against Castle Arts. That's right, the Gold Series, the brand new one right here, and the Soft Touch Series, this one, that I recently brought into my art studio so that we could do this full set, head-to-head -head battle between these two Castle Arts products. But before we get started, I gotta tell you about the massive giveaway we're doing. Giveaways are awesome, and they're even more awesome when they're bigger. Right, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> we started a giveaway last week, and I have decided, with Steve's help, to make the gift that one of you will win even bigger. So let me tell you what we have for you. We have the 48 Castle Arts Metallic Pencils. We have the 48 Castle Arts Premium Pastel Tint Pencils. We have the gorgeous, in the case, gold 120 full set of Castle Art Pencils. And now, to make it bigger and better, we're including the Castle Arts 120 Soft Touch Pencils. <laughs> Talk about full set syndrome satisfied. Everything you could ever want in the Castle Color Pencil world is coming your way. There are a lot of ways for you to enter this giveaway, so follow the link in the video description, but do it right away because this giveaway ends January 26th. We'll announce the winner on January 27th. And Steve, there's one more thing that goes with this giveaway. Yes. We don't have it made yet. Yes, so but what you're going to get, <laughs> you're going to also get the tritone worksheets to help you organize the mass majority of these pencils. So cool. That's a total value of $227. <laughs> get your entries in. Good luck, everyone. Okay, so now that you know about our giveaway, we have some stuff for all of you. Some free swatch charts and a whole lot of comparing going on to kind of learn a little bit more about the Gold Series and the Soft Touch Series. We've been working so hard over the last few weeks. So let me show you all of the swatch charts that Steve, awesome guy that he <laughs> is, has been creating for you. So these swatch charts are in the preferred coloring bliss order. So when we got all these pencils, we swatched them in the order that the either the pencils came in or the company suggested with their swatch chart. And we learned very quickly that it is not a very helpful order as far as the way I like to color as an artist and as far as organizing by the color wheel. So Steve and I have been spending days, literally days, poring over these pencils, swatching, re-swatching, and a lot of times re-re-swatching all of these <laughs> pencils to get them into a beautiful order based on the artist's color wheel so that it makes it really easy for you to find colors and kind of navigate all of these pencils. It's been a lot of fun, but a lot of work. And these free swatch charts that I'm about to show you is the end result. So first off, we have some big swatch charts here so that you can see all of the colors all on one page in a quick glance. So we've got a swatch chart in our preferred order for the soft touch pencils, all 120. The gold pencils, all 120, and then we have the Castle Arts Pastel Tints, which we kept in the number order of the pencils, and we have the Castle Arts Metallic Pencils. And again, this was the order that they suggested, which looking at it is a decent order, so it's pretty good. So we also created, well, Steve created for you, another version for the Castle Art Soft Touch and Gold, but this is spread out across how many pages, Four Steve? pages. Four pages for each download. Gives you a bigger square where you can really swatch out from heavy to light pressure and really see what that whole color can do. And again, this is in our preferred order. I am so excited to offer this to you because this has been a massive amount of work. 
just to get it to a place that looks beautiful and makes a lot of sense. I'm going to show you some of the work we've done here. But so why do we go to all this trouble? Why not just swatch them, Steve, by the order that they gave us? <laughs> <laughs> so here is the soft touch set swatched as they recommended, which is the way they were laid out in the tin. And here is after hours and hours of work, our preferred coloring bliss as far as based on the color wheel order. So let's take a quick side-by-side -side look. Let me get my face off of here again so you can see really good why we go to all this trouble. So if you take the color wheel and you lay it down here, and this is their order, remember, and you start to roll it along and you can see we're changing to yellow orange and then into orange and sort of into red orange and then whoops, we jump to red, whoops, and now back to red orange and oh, that one's got a lot of violet in it. That's a very different color. I would have put that somewhere else. Back into the reds, into red violets. You can kind of see what I mean. It It is not consistent. A few colors are just in the wrong place altogether and it would make it really hard to find a good light, medium, and dark if you're trying to create a really beautiful logical blend. Let's look at our chart now, shall we? Okay, let's start at the beginning here again and we start with yellows and it naturally flows into yellow oranges and then into the beautiful oranges, red oranges. Look, see, we've got this really strange dark brown in here, but we worked really hard in incorporating the browns into the correct areas of the color wheel so that if you need a really good dark reddish orange color, you know you can reach for that in your shadows. So cool. <laughs> Moving along into more of the reds, you can just see, look, there's some really neat places where colors come in in strange places, but they make total sense. And it's usually in the browns. Those really strange tertiary um, mixed up colors, or maybe they threw in more gray into a certain color, that grayish pink, where does it belong? Where do, where do you put it and color with it? Now you know. I want to roll some unboxing footage of when I unboxed the soft touch pencils because last week I showed you unboxing the gold and the other two tins, but I thought you would like to see what's included in the soft touch full box, the tin, and any inserts and all of that stuff. So let's run that footage. So for the soft touch, we decided to get the tin instead of the canvas bag that we did for the gold, simply because I wanted to see what the tins were like when you bought a full set like this. So you can see it has a few inserts and it comes with three trays with those nice elastic bands to make it easy to lift the trays in and out. Now these trays fit really nice inside of this tin. Unlike the pastel tints and the metallics, which I was really struggling with, this tin matches these trays really well. So one of the great things about doing this project here where we sorted all these pencils is it gives us a really unique opportunity to look at the set as a whole and how well does it stand as a whole? Are there enough blues? Are there enough reds? Are there enough light tones? Are there enough deep dark tones? So looking at the sets like this was really good. One of the first things we did was we took all the pencils out of the set and put it into my new organizer, according to the color wheel. So I have a slot, 12 different slots here, one slot for every color on the color wheel. And we plopped all the pencils, just kind of really quick guesstimates of where they belonged on the color wheel. So sorting the pencils this way was fantastic because I could see at a glance how many pencils roughly landed in each section of the color wheel. And it showed some, you know, some pretty glaring, um, miscalculations, shall we say, <laughs> of how many pencils belong in each color category in the set. After we got them into the sorter, it was time to actually swatch them all and see if our first guess was right and really refine where each pencil belonged on the color wheel. 
Now, saying it like that makes it sound like it was very simple, <laughs> but it wasn't. We made sure that we did this whole process under our good studio lights, and we had to go through and decide, does that brown lean more orange? Does it lean more red? Does it even lean violet? Some of the browns leaned violet. So I used Steve heavily. <laughs> he has such a good eye for um, color. And then we would use this color wheel and literally lay the color colors along the color wheel all those swatches and refine where they all belong now that was just maybe the second step <laughs> because then the third step is to lay them all out now that we've got them mostly in the right place and kind of decide it's that color really leaning cool or warm does it go before this color or after this color and some were really tricky because they had lots of grays or blacks mixed into the colors and some were just straight up easy you could tell right away this one is a yellow green and this one's a green you know what I mean so let me show you some of the work the process that we went through to get to this place right here I'll move this here. So I've got all of our swatches and all the literature here because we used it all to make these decisions. But just take a look. I mean, look at all these arrows. <laughs> <laughs> this was literally hours and days of, look at the arrows. <laughs> no, don't put it here, put it there, and then go this way and then go that way. <laughs> this would be like a madman's uh, maze or something. <laughs> so then we were getting closer, but yeah, no, we still got to change things. <laughs> yeah, so tons of work was put in to getting each of these set. That was just the swatches in the work for the gold series. There's another stack equal to that for the soft touch series. <laughs> so yeah, it was amazingly difficult. But once it's done, you're left with this really harmonious layout of colors. And you can quickly make some comparisons between the two sets. So let's do that together. I don't think Steve has seen these swatches this way. So let's look at them together. All right. I'm going to get this so that we can see most of it on the screen here. What I want to point out is doing this, when we started, I was leaning towards my favorite set being the gold pencils. But what we discovered was that the soft touch pencils is actually a little bit of a better balanced set as far as colors go. Yeah. So it's really quick and easy to see this. We start out with yellow and we head towards warmer colors, okay? So you can see here we get maybe to here before we start into yellow oranges. And over here we just have a little bit more. There's a little bit more in the whole color group. Now if you look at the reds, that's another really telling place. For some reason they made the gold set super heavy with reds. Tons and tons of red colors going on. And this seemed a little bit more balanced. We moved in the red violets a little faster. We've got some good red oranges. It just seemed a little more balanced. Now in the blues, there was another problem over here. That's the gold, right? Yeah, this is the gold set. So here you can see we're in blue violet land and now we're moving into blue and then immediately into blue-green. There's almost no good basic blues. There's like four, maybe five. And there's no really good light blue. This is our closest thing to a light blue right here, and it really leans into the green zone. Now, in the soft touch set, they did a little bit better. There's a few more in the blue zone. You can see we've got that many here rather than like four. <laughs> so it's a little better. Still heavy on the reds, but it's a little better balanced. Same with the greens. You get down here through the blue greens, push your way through those beautiful blue greens and into the greens. And we've got more green on the soft touch side. Look at all those greens. Now, if you color any landscapes, flowers, or anything, you know it's really important to have a lot of greens. And I feel like this set is lacking in greens. There's some good greens here, don't get me wrong, but as far as a wide variety of greens, this one, the soft touch, beats out the gold. And then in the grays, it's the same, it's interesting. Here we have some good warm grays, 
decent cool grays. I wish we had a nice light cool gray. We don't in this set. Um, and then one black and one white. And over here, they've given us a ton of grays, which is fun. I love grays. I'm not complaining. But <laughs> if I'd had my, my chance to sit down with them, I would have said, let's back off on the grays, up the blues and greens. That's yeah. what I would have said. Well, and, and I think what happens a lot with these more affordable pencils, that probably it's because most of them come from China. There's probably a few factories that they get them from. Uh, and so we see quite often that they have a lot of colors that are almost dupes for oh, each yeah. other. To where you're like, why like in the world did two. you do that? Yeah, like these two, it's a perfect example right here. Why not drop a, a pink and bring in another blue? And even the blues are... Like, look at that. It's like, I mean... <laughs> this whole row, if you blink... And, and yet you have no light blues. No, you know? no really beautiful light blues. Or blue. even dark blues, for that matter. You know, maybe one maybe or one. two. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's a little bit frustrating because as a colorist working with color pencils, it's vital to have a good contrast between your light colors up to your dark colors so you can get those delicious, beautiful blends. So that's why when we did this and saw the colors in their groups, I started to think, do I need to change my tune here and push you guys towards the soft touch because if you add in <laughs> the beautiful tints with the soft touch line technically these are the same line of pencils all of a sudden we've got a light blue we've got even more light yellows we've got a nice cool light gray and so it, it fills out and finishes this set so I think that would be my first advice is if you decide to invest in the soft touch pencils this is going to make you so much more happy with the color selection and the ability you'll have to create beautiful blends it's a must <laughs> in fact originally Originally, we were thinking of doing our tritones with the gold set. Yeah. But there aren't enough. There isn't enough variation in tone right. to be able to get good tritones for every color on the color wheel with the gold set. However, with the pastel tints in the soft mm -hmm. touch, now we feel like okay, let's do the tritones with the original soft touch. Yeah. Because we can use those pastel tints. Yeah. So. The end of this little story here is, I think the soft touch set, especially if you include the pastel tints, is a better balanced, more um, delicious as far as getting a really good contrast than the gold. But that's just one factor. We have more to talk about. Okay. So would you recommend, you know, combining the pastel tints with the gold? Okay, so let's have that quick discussion. Um, these pencils here are technically part of their soft touch series. They do feel different and perform slightly different than the gold, but I think you could go ahead and use them in with the gold as well. It will only help. The gold has the same issue as the, the soft touch in it has a lack of really light tint colors. So I think this is a good companion for whether you purchase the soft touch or the gold line. This is going to help you. As far as a consistent feel while you're coloring and blending, you'll not notice a big jump from one type of pencil to another if you color the, the pastel tints with the soft touch. But go ahead, do whatever you want. You're the colorist. So another variable to consider when you're trying to choose between the gold and the soft is the price. Now the gold set is more expensive and for this comparison, I'm not using their amazing sale prices that they've been running recently. This is more like your standard sale price that you'll find on Amazon if you're shopping here in the US. And I also compared it kind of apples to apples if the gold were in a tin versus if the soft were in a tin. So we're not taking into account the nice case that you could buy if you wanted. So the cost for the tin for the gold is $65. That's 54 cents per pencil. And the cost for the soft touch is $55 for the full set. That's 46 cents per pencil. So if cost is a huge factor, soft touch wins. 
Next thing we need to talk about is the core of the pencil. How is it different from the gold to the soft touch? Uh, first thing right off, the core size. We know for sure the core size on the gold set is 3.8 millimeters. It says it in their literature. I have no idea what the core size is on this. <laughs> I have done some serious searching on as many websites and, and uh, yeah, I don't know. But I do know it's smaller. <laughs> so you get a bigger core here. This core here, they're advertising as being oil-based on the gold set. And on the soft touch set, they're advertising it as wax-based. What does that even mean? <laughs> Do you even care? What I would say is that the gold set, it has less breakage as I've been coloring with it. It feels creamier and the colors lay down much more saturated and richer with less work. So overall, I like the feel and performance of this core over this core. This core, it has breaking issues. The tips are always breaking on my pencils and there's some more off-center issues here with these pencils, the soft touch, than there are with the gold. So if you're just considering performance as far as feel and the core, I would totally push you towards the gold set. I think they feel much better, much more fun to color with. Another way to compare and try to decide which set, which complete set is the best set for you is in performance. So I want to do a quick blending test. I'm going to pick some colors from each set and we'll do some blends and see how the colors come together and see if I feel a difference. For this blending test, I picked a yellow, orange, and a red from each of the sets. So what I ended up choosing was five for the yellow. I picked Cadmium Orange Deep, which is 79 for the orange. And we picked Red Ochre, or number 15, for the red. Let's see how they blend. For this test, I'm working on our beautiful color pencil paper to give them the best advantage possible, and I'm using Jennifer's rule of blending thirds to get the three colors to come together seamlessly. It's also a great way to test layerability as you're testing blendability. I just completed the blending test, and I've got to say, I felt like I was holding the gold pencils back. They lay down so much pigment, I almost lost the yellow on the left because I was kind of following the same blend that I did up here. But down here, you just barely have to touch, and that orange goes on to that blend so beautifully. Now. As far as layers go, this end of the blend has a lot of layers and both pencils layered just really nice. They're not the best layering pencils I've ever worked with, which would probably be polychromos, but they layered really good. There wasn't a point where I was like, oh no, I can't get any more layers on here. So I felt like I had plenty of layerability to get the blend to go together perfectly. Yep. The gold, it just blends a little bit better. Layers, great for both. Blendability, the gold wins. Another thing to keep in mind about the Castle Arts system is that they have a universal color system across all of their different products. Like I said in the last video, this has got to be extremely difficult to get the same color to look the same way despite product. They, they do this color system across their watercolor pencils, both brands of color pencils, their paints, all of it. And I just don't know how they successfully do this. <laughs> there are some differences. As you can see here, I circled every pencil here in the soft touch set that has a corresponding color number in the gold set. So technically this number that we were doing these two reds for our blend test, um, this number 15 and this number 15 in their universal color system should be the same. Now we've done this test with a couple different brands before. It was Faber-Castell, Caran d'Ache, and we may have even done it with Prismacolor, although I don't think their color system is as universal as some of them are. Caran d'Ache and Faber-Castell, I was surprised at how good the colors went across the different lines of tools. So let's take a quick look here and see how we feel about the way the colors work in the universal color system of Castle Arts.
Here we've tested eight different pencils, but they should be the same as far as the universal color system. Now, first thing I want you to look at is crumbs. That's another thing to think about when you're picking up a color pencil set. Some are excessive in crumbs and some do just fine. So this is the gold side. You can see the crumbs that are coming off of some of the colors. And over here is the soft touch side. Honestly, I think they're pretty even with crumbs. Sometimes there's a, a more crummy pencil, like this 38 was very crummy, um, and then this black over here was very crummy. So I think it's just, you know, crumbs are pretty equal from side to side. So now let's look at the colors. Technically, the colors should look identical or pretty close to identical um, from one column to the next. So I'm gonna hold it up close again and let you look at it and comment below. Do you think their universal color system is really good or do you think it has some issues? <laughs> Um, yeah, Steve just came over to look and see what he thinks. Now, this is just a, a random sampling of eight pencils. So I'm sure there are some that are straight on exact matches, and then there are going to be others that are far off. What do you think, Steve? Does it look like <clears throat> I colored the same colors on both columns? Yeah, you know, I think it's like we talked about last week. Um, overall, it's decent. Yeah. Um, but... When I was going through and putting these in order, you know, the colors, um, that's when I really found some issues where the differences actually changed the order that we put them in our preferred color order. Yeah, I agree. Um, you can see there, that It here. wasn't a whole lot of them, but there were some. Yeah, this brown is a really good example. To me, in my eye, this is a cooler brown. Would you agree? A little bit, yeah. And this is a little warmer. The yellows, this has definitely got more orange in it, and this less orange in it. But at first glance, I think you would look at it and go, she colored the same colors twice. Yeah. It's just when you're being nitpicky do you start seeing the little differences. So if the color system is important to you, now you know. <laughs> so now we're at the part where I want to tell you which of these two sets I think wins this battle. And I must say, this is really difficult <laughs> because each set has its pros and each set has its cons. But if you only had one, uh, one amount of money to invest in a set right now, which one would I send you to? I still gotta say the gold. If I were to sit down and color something right now, I would reach for the gold simply because of how creamy and how vibrant the colors are. So yeah, I would send you towards the gold. That would be my first. But if you're looking for a really good range of colors so that you can color really light lights all the way to really dark darks and, and feel confident that there's a really good color system to back you up with that, then I would send you towards the soft touch, especially if you can afford to tack on the pastel tints. The cost of that would be 55 for the soft touch plus 35 for the, the pastel tints equals $90, and in total you'd have 168 pencils to play with. So if you had a little bit more money and that was really important to you, I would send you towards the soft touch. So did I really pick a winner? <laughs> <laughs> this one's tough because they are both a Chinese brand. Um, so they're both playing in that budget-friendly crafter type area, even though they proclaim things like um, light fastness and all that stuff. We don't have any proof of all of that. So all I can go off is the feel and the colors that were given me. That's all I can go off. And I think that's why I'm having trouble going back and forth and not declaring a winner because they both have pros. They both have cons. And I think you're going to win with either set, which is pretty cool. That's two really good options for you. So, yeah, I, I lost it. 
picking a winner. <laughs> but you can win by entering the giveaway and getting them all. And then you can play with them and let me know which ones you like better. So make sure you follow the link in the video description. Don't forget this giveaway ends on January 26th and the winner will be announced on January 27th. Make sure you subscribe and hit that little like button because that tells us that you enjoy this and it tells YouTube that you're enjoying it too, which really supports and helps everything we do. The hundreds of hours we spend pouring over colors and getting them in correct order for you. Follow the links for all your free swatch charts and have fun swatching. You don't have to do all that work. I'm so glad I can do that for you. Thanks, Steve, for all your help. You're welcome. And I hope you all have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>